Thank you once again. It's always an honor and a privilege that you usually get blessed from this channel, Pastor Kenyanju Joseph. And thank you for subscribing. I would advise that uh, you hit on the bell uh, on your channel, on that particular channel, so that when we upload something new, when we bring a new content, you are notified by that bell. So God bless you. So far, I know you are blessed. And this particular moment, I want us to share on a certain subject about the life of Evangelist Joan, who has been our guest uh, this far, how she has been able to serve the Lord and even continue working for the Lord together with us. We serve with a church called Voice of God Church and Ministries, located in Keno, opposite Mamangina Primary School. So in case you do want to, to come and fellowship with us or even assist in the ministries that we do, uh, you are welcome. God bless you. And so today, Evaji Joan, Karibu Sana. Thank you. And uh, in this segment, we want to talk about um, serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, we are living in times when serving the Lord has become an, a, a by-the-way job. It's not something that people are passionate about. Mm -hmm. And many things that have led to this is the rise of uh, false prophets. Mm -hmm. And also the so many dramas that mm -hmm. are going on in the church, confusions. Mm -hmm. But also I have found out that the church of Christ is still there. Mm -hmm. Men and women who have been called by God are there. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what would you say about uh, since the Lord called you, and your journey with the Lord, what has kept you as a believer? What has kept you going? What has kept me going, first of all, is that um, when I got saved, I was so passionate with the I wanted, rather, to find out everything that God says about me. Yes. I made it my business. I never forgot I, my first church where I was for a good, a good 10 years. Mm. I never miss a Sunday service or a Tuesday service and Wednesday, and that was from in New York City, and I live in Long Island. Mm. So I used to drive every two, every Wednesday and every Sunday. God spoke to me clearly when I got saved and told me, Joan, the same way I speak to all these preachers in every chat and on TV, mm -hmm. is the same way I'll yes. be communing with you. Uh -huh. If you seek my face, yes. you will never be manipulated by anyone. Mm -hmm. There will never be a false prophet. If you're not giving you a prophetic message, it will be a confirmation of what I've already spoken to you. Uh -huh. So for me, from day one, I realized it is God I needed to hear. It's the Lord I needed to seek, yes. not man, mm. not a pastor, not a friend. Yes. God was going to be my yardstick. The Holy Spirit was the one who was going to lead me. Mm. I was going to hear from Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the word. I made it my business. I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation within one year. I did not want to skip one chapter, mm. one verse, in case it referred to me. And as I continued from the beginning, read the word of God, my life started being transformed, being conf uh, changed by God. Yes. Uh, because as I leave that, you cannot be yoked with unbelievers, that to be out. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was ready, I read the word of God with a vision with the agenda to be changed by God, have with the ever, agenda to be in alignment with the word of God. Have you ever read the Bible from cover to cover? I've read it several times. I just said that the first year I finished the Bible within one year. Wow. I have read it over and over from Genesis Revelation. Revelation. And every time I read, I get fresh revelation. So you cannot say you have read it once or twice. That's not enough. It depends on where you are spiritually. You are still learning. And you are so still people, receiving the revelation. People are being cheated. Mm -hmm. When the Bible is still open, mm -hmm. they still follow deception. And they are going there accusing the church of deception, falsehood. Yet it is them who have not read the truth. They have not read the Bible. Like yourself, you have read cover to cover several times. You know, that's a very good question. I like that. Yes. Because I always tell the people, they are lazy. Mm -hmm. They want shortcuts. They want to be cheated by false prophets. They want to be cheated by those uh, pastors. Stop accusing the pastors. Leave the word of God, mm -hmm. people. You have made yourself vulnerable. 
You have put yourself in a position to be cheated by anyone because you are completely lazy. You think some miracle will happen somehow miraculously. Mm. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You're lying to yourself. Wake up. Uh -huh. Wake up. You're in a battle. You are going to have to read the word of God. Digest it. Eat it. Read it over and over again. And every time you read the God, the Lord will give you revelation. Amen. And there is another scripture I want to finish with. Mm. The word of God in Hosea 4, 6, of, uh, one of them, it says, My people perish because of lack yes. of knowledge. Yes. 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 And the next verse is critical. Because yes. you have lacked knowledge, mm. I will reject you. You will not be my priest and we are called to be priests. Yes. You will not be my priest. And I will reject even your children mm -hmm. and forget mm -hmm. your children. Yes. That is so critical. People read that as a joke. They're blaming the pastor. Blaming the pastor. Yes. They're under the judgment of God, mm -hmm. just as you were when you refused to read the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's why God says you will perish. God is not going to feel sorry for you. We are not listening to a pity party that you, you gave the money to the pastor, they bought some plane or whatever they did. You refuse to read the word of God. Yeah. You refuse to listen to the Holy Spirit. God would have told you, don't plant in that soil. That's not going to do good soil. That pastor is trying to enrich themselves. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so, stop throwing blame games. Eh? Stop throwing blame games. Do what you are supposed to do. Yes. Seek Jesus. Jesus is the word, the bread of life, the word of life, the daily bread. Seek the Lord. He will give you revelation. You will not be cheated by anyone. Nobody carries the keys to the store of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Everybody can access the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, he will teach you. He will teach you. And so if you are careful to become a good student, listen to the Holy Spirit. Read the word of God. Mm -hmm. This is what will make you know whether the preacher is speaking the right things. That's right. Is preaching the very gospel. Mm -hmm. Because you already know that scripture where he is reading. As he is reading, it should be a confirmation. He should be yes. helping you to complete the sentence because you already know. You already know it. Yeah. But uh, currently we are having believers whose last time to read the word of God was when they were doing their CRE, Christian Religious Education. They have, they have made their choice to do so. Yes. They have made their choice to backslide. Yes. They have made their choice to lie that they are doing it online. Who can do Christian online on, by themselves? Mm -hmm. First of all, they are trying to avoid tithe. Yes. Because when you are doing online, you are not obliged to any child. You are not paying anybody. They are, they are, they are hypocrites. Mm -hmm. They don't want to know what God says about them. Yes. Because they don't want to change, you know. Change is not very easy. A lot of people don't want to change. They don't want the word of God to judge them. So they, they, they are condemning themselves. They don't want to read the word of God because they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. They want to be worldly. They want to be secular. They want to be religious. Because the minute you know, the minute the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you know, you can't say you don't know. Yeah. And God holds you accountable mm -hmm. to what you know. Yeah. But many don't want to know. They don't want serious association with any particular child. They want to be accusers of the brethren, accusing the pastors, accusing they. Stand on your own. Yes. Make a difference. Stand be the, the best Lord. Christian uh -huh. so you don't have to, to, to be following anybody. Yeah. You know, they are full of lies, hypocrisy, and excuses. You know, who are they fooling? And I, I, I get to understand or to think mm -hmm. that uh, most of those people who keep pointing fingers mm -hmm. and who keep saying that this church does this, this church doesn't do this, mm -hmm. it is not the problem of the church. It's their problem. It their what problem. are they doing themselves to, yes. to prove that they are better? Why yes. don't you get saved and yeah. be a better person yeah. so you don't have to be pointing that pastor? You can help that pastor. That's it. But you don't want to do it. Yeah. You want to be religious, secular, yeah. wildly. Who are you fooling? You're fooling yourself. You might as well, you might as well backslide to stay with the devil. Uh -huh. Because God says, if you are not completely with me, mm. you are not, you are against me. Yes. But everybody wants to be the popularity. Yes. Everyone wants popularity of being with this group yes. and that group mm. and to be known by everybody, to be on the, every Facebook about everybody's nonsense and business. You know? I also found uh, a thread. Uh, I'm happy that you mentioned uh, this social media uh, exposure. Uh -huh. So many people you go online, mm. you find them on every social media. They are alive and active. 
But you come to fellowships, you come to church service, you come to the morning devotions. You can't find them. You can't find them. You, Their Bibles are as new. You know what Pastor King and Jui? You know Pastor and Jui? Yeah. What I know is that people are desperate for social life. They, they become public people. They want their life to be public. Mm. If I bought a new car, I want to put it on social media. Mm. If I, and then again, if I need fad dressing, yeah. I'm posting on social media. I mean, come on. Mm. They, they, they are so desperate. They want the whole world to know their business. My personal life is my business. Mm. I don't want it on social media. When I'm with my friend, we are my, we are my friend. We're having the best of time. Yeah. We're having a ball. We are spiritually connected, socially connected. What do we have to put on the social media? For the other people to see what? When we travel here, you are telling people you are going there. You know, some of these people, people will go behind them and break the house and steal because you, you are already telling the whole universe you went on vacation in such and such a place. And, and I wish the way we are too loud on these platforms. Mm -hmm is the way we are too involved with the scriptures. And we are, you know, with the word of God, Jesus said, go ye into all the world mm -hmm. and tell them, mm -hmm. teach them mm -hmm. and baptize them. Mm -hmm. You are told, go and be loud. I wish the way we are loud on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on YouTube, on Instagram, on all the social media handles. Mm -hmm. I just desire, I admire the people there if they were Christians. And by the way, that is my calling. Um, that is my calling yeah. in the marketplace yes. uh, to lead people to the Lord. And as we go, even when we go together, you see, I'm always leading people to the yes, Lord absolutely. because that's my calling. So, yes, I want to be so bold. Uh, you know, I don't have time to go to social media. I mean, the, the gay people, the worldly people, they are so bold. Yes. They are out there marching, mm. marching around. Mm. Uh, and and, and we, people, Christians, are whispering. They, they don't want to be be hard. Mm -hmm. These people with their wickedness and with their sin, they are bold enough to stand out there. Mm -hmm. But Christian, they yes. rather put something on social media. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, want to be identified yeah. because they don't want to be criticized. Mm -hmm. But they, these are the people in sin in the world. Mm -hmm. They are everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They have no problem saying what they have to say, marching around. You know, I always say, you know what? Don't march in my neighborhood because you know what? I brought the chauffeur in my neighborhood. <laughs> I will walk there deviously. I'm a just I have a Daniel spirit. Yes. I pray when I'm walking on the street. I pray loud, yes. loud when I'm walking. My yes. doors are open. I'm not afraid of it. It's my human right and my spiritual right, by the way. Amen. So if you are gay, you come to walk in my neighbor. I'm going to blow the sofa, intimidate you until you go away. That is I have no problem with that because it's my human, no it's my spiritual. No apology, it's my yes. spiritual right. It's my human right also. <laughs> you're not going to override my human, my spiritual right just because you are whatever you choose yes. to be. Eh? <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Mm. You are blessed. You are a successful retired uh, woman in God. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are paying your ticket to be here. You are meeting all your bills. I see you supporting children home, even helping so many people with their school, sponsoring them, mm -hmm. and doing so much for the people. Mm -hmm. What drives you that you feel fulfilled as you serve the Lord? Yet in the church, I see people even withholding 10%. They are tight. Mm -hmm. People are leaving church because of offerings. Mm -hmm. They don't want to give, but mm -hmm. yourself, you are blessed, but you are not in your comfort. You have everything that God can give to any person. Let me but tell you. you are not back there, you are here. Let me tell you, those people who are withholding the 10%, yeah. they are going to remain poor. Mm -hmm. God, no, God has no obligation yeah. to protect their wealth. Yeah. He has given us everything we have, a hundred percent. Whether what we have ever had, mm -hmm. what we have, and what we will have, yes. He's given us hundred mm -hmm. percent. He only wants ten percent. Yes. And He says in Malachi, I tell the people, stop fooling yourself having excuses. Read Malachi. Mm -hmm. Ask God to give you revelation. Yeah. The ten percent you are paying is for your protection of your wealth. Mm -hmm. And then God opens the windows of heaven mm -hmm. that you cannot contain the wealth of God. Yes. That's how I've seen God work in my life by that. Away. Amen. The time I was in Times Square Church for 10 years, one of the biggest church. Now, uh, now I'm in Word of Life Ministry in Freeport, New York. Mm -hmm. But I was in uh, the most amazing teaching church, uh, Times Square Church by David Wilkerson, who is known internationally. Yeah. That is where 
I heard the scripture about tithing. Mm. I was so shocked because I've been in that church for like five years. I had never, you know, the devil had made me not get a revelation of Malachi when I read the whole Bible the first year. Mm. Because I didn't read, I never remember that scripture. But that's the devil. Because the devil did not want to give 10% so that God can protect me. Mm. When I learned and got a revelation of that chapter in Malachi 3, mm. I have never withheld a penny yes. money of God. Amen. And I have gone further, helping many preachers, yes. many churches. Yes. And above all, mm. God gave me a burden for the orphan. Mm. These kids who are in um, this place called Lucky Summer, yeah. uh, since 2009 when I retired. Mm. And I've been taking care of them mm. and educating some of them in high school. Yeah. And I, I give them food every month, yeah. a monthly since 2009. Mm. Uh, I saw that need when I was in Jamaica, Caribbean Islands with my girlfriend, mm. a colleague of mine when we had gone on, on holiday. Mm. Uh, I saw those kids on TV uh, who were the result of the clash of seven, 2007. Yeah. And uh, I always had hard to help children, but I never wanted my money to go through second hand. Mm. Um, different people, I wanted to have the direct access to, to these kids. Yeah. And fortunately, a very dear friend of mine, um, Shiro introduced me to her niece uh, who does filming, and she had captured that story of those kids. Mm. And that's how Judy Kivinga at the time, it connected me with those children, physically where they were yeah. when I came for Christmas at yeah. uh, that time. Mm. And that's how God in, introduced me to those kids, and I took that burden. So ever since I've been taking care of them, uh, giving them food my, monthly sometimes, buying clothes for them, and educating some of them in high school and I have that passion for that you know because they don't have anything they don't have anybody you know and whatever God has given me has given me more than enough yeah. I'm enjoying an abundance of wealth mm. material wealth spiritual wealth uh, more than enough so I it's, it's I'm not interested to be saying how millions of uh, dollars in the bank or millions of shillings. Yeah. No, I, I want to be able to be serving God with what he has blessed me with. Yeah. What it is from God, it's all from God mm. and it's all for God, yeah. for his glory, for his kingdom. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Very powerful. Challenging people who think that uh, the church is there to manipulate their pockets. Currently there is a narrative from the devil. Mm -hmm. and they must die mm -hmm. that the church is there to enrich the pastor and people think that when they go to church they will have to be sensitive because they will be manipulated mm -hmm. i'm saying wake up wake Serve up the lord with your heart and from knowledge read your bible read the bible go and do what the bible does mm -hmm. and through that you open the doors for your blessings Amen. and Amen. nobody stands between you and your God. Nobody. You'll never be able to contain the word that God will bless you with when you are blessing the church, yes. people of God, mm -hmm. people in need. Yeah. I mean, you will die and leave this world here. Yeah. How much? Nobody's taking any word uh, to their grave. Yeah. So for me, I purpose and I passionately want to do as much as I can yeah. uh, for people who are in need, like our church that we are building in voice of God, yeah. and uh, those kids are fun, yeah. and any other need that may come along, yeah. because God has blessed me. You know, I'm not going to the world, to the grave in my world. Yeah. I want to do what I can. And I've done it in so many different ways. I don't even have to mention it. Mm. So many ways I've helped in so many people, mm. you know. And I've served many ministries. I served Evangelist Wairimo's ministry for five years mm. when it was located, the branch in New York. Mm. I served that ministry, Faith Evangelistic Ministry, for five years. Mm. And now I'm serving the Word of Life ministry. Mm. And I'll continue to go on to serve God because my calling is um, apostolic calling for evangelism in the marketplace. Every, and the, I learned this from the time I got saved. We'll go with my husband. Everywhere we go, whether it's an elevator, parking lot, I was telling people about the saving grace of God, what God has done for me. In fact, one time my husband said to me, oh, you know, you're scaring people. I say, you know what? I want them to be scared and get saved yeah, get because saved. I know be they need to be saved. I said to him, he used to think that I was a Christian. Imagine, because I was brought up in a, from a Christian home. Yeah. He used to think I'm a Christian automatically. Even when we would have parties overnight, the next day I'm in church. Mm. So he really respected me thinking I was a Christian. 
The day I got saved, I was here on vacation uh, because of my mom. When I told him, I said, Dave, guess what? I got saved. He said, I know for sure you'll be telling everybody. I said, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Because I want everyone to know about the grace of God. Yeah. By this day, I can tell you all our friends back there, they are saved. Amen. They watch me going through difficult times, going through trial, through various shadow, shadows of death. And they see God taking me higher and higher and higher. Even last year when I went through the darkest time, through the desert, that God was silent. But he told me he was preparing me, purifying me as gold for a time such as this, as we are sitting here, to go back, talk about his goodness, what he has done for me. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You are there and uh, you are listening to us and saying, I want their God. I want Evangelist Jones, Pastor Kenyan Jewish God. That God is not a preserve of some. God is for us all. And Amen. so maybe Amen. this particular time as you are following this show, mm -hmm. you are saying, I wish I was told how to receive the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I want by faith Evangelist Joan to lead you to God. And we will pray that prayer and God will bless you. You can Praise the Lord. It's time to make a decision. It's the greatest decision you ever make in your life. Because when you meet Jesus, the Son of God, the lover of our soul, your life will be dramatically changed forever. So follow me. Say, repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins and write my name in the book of life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you have said that prayer, you are a child of the Most High God. You are washed with the blood of Jesus. You have left the kingdom of the devil. You are the king, the kingdom of God. Your life will never be the same. Jesus loves you passionately and he will open his, your spiritual eyes to, so that you can receive and understand his love, how he loves you passionately. God bless you, love you in Jesus' name and keep going. Seek God. Read the word of God. Don't be deceived. Don't be manipulated by anyone, by any pastor, any of your friends. Follow Jesus, read the word of God. He's the bread of life, he's the word of God. Praise Jesus. God bless you. Bye. Amen. Amen. What a powerful way to close our show today. May the Lord God bless you. Continue interacting with the wealth of information, the word of God on this channel. And please become another ambassador who will be able to push this content to the other people. Praise God. God. God bless you. <laughs> Thank and you, God Jesus. Keep you going. Thank Amen. you, Lord. We love you. Amen. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> yeah, we